Hello. A couple students that I teach were working through this really interesting problem. And what it was, was to find the sum of all even Fibonacci numbers less than 4 million. So when I did this problem, I did it one way. And the student took a very different approach, which I thought was fascinating. They actually found a formula I'd never seen before. So right now I'm just on a Wikipedia site about Fibonacci's number. And down here there's a really great formula that you can use to calculate any one of those terms. Let me just scroll down to it. It's right here. This formula right here is a pretty cool formula. I'd never seen it before. Um, and what it allows you to do is, given the, the nth, knowing what term you want, that is the nth term, I can actually plug it in this formula and it will give me the value. Now there's some pretty cool math that goes into proving this and we're not going to dive into that right now. So they sent me their, their attempted solution and they're having some coding problems. So let's start by looking at that. So here's their program, even Fibonacci's. So this student hadn't learned a structure called an array yet. And if I run their program, what was happening was they were getting what's called an index out of bounds exception. So really quickly, let's just explain what an array is. An array is a data structure. And, and what it allows us to do is to collect a bunch of data of the same type. So in this case, the student is making an array of doubles, and he knows he's going to have 300 doubles to store. Now, I have playlists about arrays, and you can go and look those up, and this video is not going to be about explaining what an array is. But what I noticed when I went through this student's work is partly they've tried to implement an array, they've had this problem because an array out of bounds means you're trying to add either too many numbers or too few numbers or you're trying to access some array index that, that doesn't exist. So for an array of 300 doubles, the indexes go from 0 to 299. So when I see this error here, that means you're trying to put a value into index negative something or an index greater than 299. So what I've done is I've copied his code and I, I've actually done a slightly different solution. And we're going to highlight some interesting concepts from this. So again, our problem is that we want to add all of the even Fibonacci numbers under 4 million. So this is his initial kind of setup here. So he's declared a bunch of um, variables and he's done it all in one line using a slightly different notation. And he's calculated F1 here, which we can highlight right here, using that formula. Very interesting. And F2 using that formula. Okay, so let's come down here. So I've actually removed the arrays component altogether because you really don't actually need an array for this problem. I think it actually makes it more complicated. So he set up a for loop and he started at his counter is i, so we started at i is 0. And then his condition in the for loop is that right here, this is calculating the next Fibonacci number in the sequence using that i as a counter. And we're going to continue to do this loop as long as the calculated value is less than 4 million. So the first kind of compu like computer science problem that we run into is notice up here that he's declared it as a double. So we're going to get we're going to get decimal values, and even though those decimal values are going to be very close to um, the value, the way the computer does the math, what's going to actually happen is we're going to have some interesting rounding happening, which means it won't be precise. So what I've just done here is I've declared a long variable. Now a long is is like an integer, but it allows you to hold larger integer values. So in my course, we say we only talk about integers, but there's actually a number of different types of variables to store integers. Um, we could use bytes, shorts, integers, or longs. Um, a long is just like an integer, but it allows you to store much larger integers. So here, what we've done is each time we go through the loop, we've gone and we've calculated the next number in the Fibonacci sequence using that formula he, he grabbed from Wikipedia. Again, fascinating. Um, but the problem is that highlighted section there on the screen actually generates a double, but I don't want it to be a double. So I've used this process called casting. By putting the word long in brackets, 
in front of that calculation, what's going to happen is it will calculate the number here as a double, but then it will just force it to become an integer value by chopping off whatever decimals exist. So notice here, I'm going to remove this system that this comment here, and I'm going to actually see here how I have the word long there. Let's remove that. So if I run this program right now, it's going to print out every one of the Fibonacci sequence here. And watch what happens if I run this. We scroll up. See how it has all those decimals there? Um, notice as we get larger in the Fibonacci sequence, what's happening is the way the computer does the calculation, we get these decimals added in. So what I want to do is I want to just chop all those decimals off. And to do that, I, I cast it. So by again, this is the process of casting. It's saying whatever you calculate in front of this, which is this value here, just chop off the decimals. So now if I run this, see how there's no decimals anymore? So now I can I just have to figure out which ones are even and then add them together. And I'm gonna comment this line out again because that was just for me, my help to debug this. So what I do, like I said, is I've declared a long here and then I've calculated the specific Fibonacci sequence number and I've forced it to be a long. So then I've put an if statement here and what this if statement does is it takes that that temporary variable that I've just stored the most recent Fibonacci number into and I check if when I mod it by 2 it's equivalent to 0 because remember mod gives us the remainder when we go through the division process so even numbers when we divide them by 2 the remainder should be 0 so if I take a number, mod it by 2, and the remainder is 0, that means the number is even. So if a number mod 2 is equivalent to 0, that means, that means no remainder. And let's just tap this over to make this look nice. Thus, it is even. So basically what's going to happen here is I'm going to take this and I'm going to check if it's even and then if it's even I'm going to add it to sum and notice here I go through the whole recalculation process but I actually don't have to I can just take the temp and just add temp to it so now what happens is as soon as I calculate that Fibonacci number I'm going to go check if it's even and if it's even I'm going to add it into sum and so now when I run this program it gives me the sum of all even Fibonacci numbers that are less than 4 million. So again, this is a really cool approach to this problem. It, it probably isn't the most elegant approach, but it really does highlight some really cool stuff about computer science, and, and that is there's lots of ways to do these problems. Again, what this student tried to do here is the student tried to use a, a data structure called arrays. If you happen to be in my grade 11 class and you're watching this video, we haven't learned arrays yet. We won't learn them for a while. But arrays are a little bit, I think, overkill in this, this situation. Because what's going to happen is we're going to, we're more likely to run into to errors like we've, we've run into here. Index out of bounds. So a, a solution to this problem is just to, every time we calculate that new Fibonacci number, check if it's even, and then add it to sum. And if I run it, I see that the sum of all Fibonacci numbers that are even less than 4 million is 4613732. Thank you very much for showing me this new formula. I'll be sure to use it one day in class. Good luck with all your other explorations.